All right, let's get right into it. We're hearing about electric cars constantly, right? But what's actually happening on the ground? We're going to follow the numbers to see who's really winning the global race for EV dominance, and you'll see why one country is just leaving everyone else in the dust. So first, let's just wrap our heads around the scale here. By the end of 2024, there are going to be nearly 58 million electric cars on roads all over the world. Now get this, that's more than triple the entire global fleet from just three years ago. The growth is just, it's absolutely explosive. And just look at this chart to see how fast it's all happening. Seriously, we're not talking about some slow, steady increase. This is a classic hockey stick curve, straight up. This year alone, in 2024, more than 18 million new electric cars will hit the road. So yeah, the EV revolution isn't on its way, it's already here, and it is accelerating way faster than most of us realize. But here's the thing, that massive global boom? It's not happening everywhere at the same speed, not even close. The story of the EV race is really a tale of three very different markets, all moving at their own pace. China, Europe, and of course, the United States. And this one slide shows three completely different futures. If we stick to the policies we have today, then by 2030, a whopping 80% of all new cars sold in China will be electric. In Europe, it's about 60%. But in the United States, only 20%. These aren't just statistics. These are totally divergent paths for the entire auto industry. The real question is, why? So let's start with the undisputed champion in this race. China isn't just winning, they are lapping the competition. How on earth did they manage to get so far ahead so incredibly fast? You know, you might think it's some super complicated government strategy, but it really all boils down to one incredibly simple and powerful factor. They solved the single biggest problem holding back mass adoption, the price tag. And the numbers here are just mind boggling. If you go back to 2021, half of all battery electric cars sold in China were already cheaper than the gas-powered version. Okay, now fast forward to today, 2024, and that number has leaped to nearly two-thirds. I mean, when the cleaner, newer technology is also the cheaper option, well, the choice for the average person becomes pretty darn simple. So how'd they do it? Well, a huge piece of the puzzle is choice. Plain and simple. If you're a car buyer in China, more than half of all the electric models you can choose from cost less than $30,000. Now compare that to the United States. How many choices do you have in that price range? Two. Just two models. And in Europe, it's only about 5%. This isn't just a price gap. It is a choice chasm. Okay, now let's jump over to Europe, where the story is completely different. The ambition there is super high, right? They've got strong climate goals, tough regulations. But that top-down ambition is slamming head-on into a bottom-up reality for consumers. And that reality is affordability. I mean, the cost difference when you compare it to China is just night and day. In Germany, which is Europe's biggest car market, a small electric car is still around 45% more expensive than its gas equivalent. Meanwhile, in China, a similar car is 50% cheaper. So as European governments started pulling back subsidies in 2024, sales growth just flatlined. Because for a lot of people, the math just didn't work anymore. And that brings us to the United States. After a really exciting burst of growth, the American EV market has hit a major speed bump. All that initial momentum has slowed down a lot. And you can see the slowdown clear as day right here. In 2023, the market grew by a pretty solid 40%. But in 2024, that growth just fell off a cliff, down to only 10%. Now, it's still growing, sure, but the pace has slowed to a crawl compared to where it was and where its global competitors are. So the big question is, what's going on? What's really putting the brakes on U.S. sales and stopping the market from keeping up? And the answer? Well, it probably sounds familiar by now. It comes down to those same two culprits we've been talking about. A stubborn affordability gap, where EVs are still seen as a premium item for most people, and a serious lack of choice, especially for smaller, more affordable cars. All right, so we've looked at what's happening, this big split in sales. Now let's dig into the why. We're gonna look at the two core technologies that are basically gonna decide who wins this race, batteries and charging. Okay, the heart of every single EV is its battery. And right now, China's control of that heart is overwhelming. They produce nearly 80% of the entire world's battery cells. That gives them a scale that is so massive, it creates an advantage in both cost and innovation that is just incredibly hard for anyone else to catch. And here is what that advantage looks like in real world numbers. 
In 2024 alone, battery prices in China dropped by a staggering 30%. In Europe and the US, they only fell by about 10 to 15%. That gap is getting wider every single year, making Chinese EVs cheaper and cheaper to build. But hey, it's not just about the car itself. It's about whether you can actually use it, right? Especially for long trips. Look at the huge difference in fast charging on highways. Over 75% of major highways in the European Union have a fast charger at least every 50 kilometers. In the U.S., that number is only about 35%. That creates huge gaps in the network and fuels that range anxiety we always hear about. And this whole cost conversation doesn't just apply to regular car buyers. It's actually even more important for commercial vehicles, like trucks. For a trucking company, the upfront price is just one piece of the puzzle. What really, really matters is the total cost of ownership, the TCO, over the entire life of that truck. And this is where China's lead in batteries and cheap electricity is completely changing the game. In China, today, an electric heavy-duty truck is already cheaper to own and run than a diesel one. But in the U.S., diesel still has a 20% cost advantage, and that's slowing down the switch to electric in one of the most important sectors for cutting emissions. So let's just pull this all back together. The global EV market is at this huge tipping point, but it's tipping at very different speeds in different places. China is on this hyper-aggressive path towards almost total electrification. Europe is trying to follow, even with some bumps in the road. And the U.S. is on a much slower, much more uncertain path. These different futures are being decided right now. The tectonic plates of the auto industry, an industry that's been stable for a century, are shifting right under our feet. The advantages that were built up over decades are being totally upended by new tech and new industrial giants. So the real question for you isn't just what kind of car you'll buy next, but where will it come from? Where will its design, its technology, and its profits be based? The race is on, and the map is being completely redrawn before our very eyes.